questions. I'm here with Lane Gretzky from Philly. How's it going? Hey, hey. what's up, y'all? Today, oh, really appreciate you guys coming on. Let's dive right into it. So, when and how did you guys form? Want to take it, Mark? Uh, yeah. So, um, I think I first reached out to, um, I think Tom was the first person in the current lineup that I talked to. Um, we were just, you know, kind of wanting to write some more fun sounding songs, um, more straightforward kind of pop punk stuff. Um, then eventually Juan came in, uh, started writing some really cool jams, and then uh, Tim came and joined us. Um, and and I dragged Mike into that. Yeah, I, I was pulled <laughs> in. It was kind as of the, as the newest guy. Yeah. yeah so. Very magnetic. Didn't have a choice. <laughs> he put a gun to your head. He's like, you will join this band, otherwise you're in big trouble. Tim, Tim had good pull on me since we were in a cover band together. So he was just like, well, you know, I know you play bass, so he pulled me in. Yeah, and also I had to go through that because there was another member, uh, John, who I wouldn't have been in this band if he didn't pull me aside one party. Totally waste it. And like, I love the guy, but he also could be really intimidating. And he was just like, "You're you're gonna you're gonna jam with us. You're gonna come and jam with us." And uh, yeah, there are so many things. That, that's mind. that's how I joined the band. And then, unfortunately, due to circumstances, uh, he couldn't be in the band anymore, and I dragged Mike into it. That's right. Well, Mike, you're the real MVP. <laughs> Thank you. That's right. <laughs> Bass players always are. <laughs> <laughs> Truly the best. Well, so you guys just released Philophobia a couple weeks ago. How's the uh, response been to it? I think it's been pretty good. Um, you know, best best year was definitely a, a lot higher for performer, just because I think it's just a, a just way a more catchy yeah. song. Um, and also, I think the algorithm got a hold of it on Spotify. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, I mean, so far, every song I've gotten really, really good um, reviews from anybody we've gotten to show it to. Yeah, I feel like best year, like it was like the single kind of feeling thing. That's like the one that people are like, oh, that has the essence of it. But Philophobia was more of like a, had cool instrumentation to it that people really enjoyed. Like my buddy was all about the guitars kind of that leave in and he was hooked right away. So it's it's like a different response, even though still good responses um, mm. overall. Yeah. yeah, they're almost like, I feel like not completely different, different ends of the spectrum, but like one song's like a very poppy, like straightforward song. The other one's like a little bit darker and kind of shows like different sides of us yes right on so who do you guys record it with and how was the process we uh linked up with a couple of my friends that i knew uh that run a studio out in lancaster called the Plyscope. it's uh ben roth and uh and john smith and uh yeah they're just really great guys they're in a band called uh you me and everyone we know and uh they're personal favorite of mine and uh it was just it was kind of a dream to actually get to work with them and my buddy jb offered to uh help us out with uh pre-production so we uh, enlisted his help as well and uh i think it all just came together to make a, a really cool record that must have been really dope they are great to work with yeah, yeah. Work, working with I, them was some of the best like, yeah, highly I've ever had. Yeah, I, I, I hate going into like any new experience let alone into a new studio after being so comfortable with like, it, actually we had a mutual friend named Bruce that we recorded with before. And we were, I, I was very comfortable recording with them, but like it was instantly like, I didn't know them that well, but since Tom knew them so well, I felt comfortable and they made it, the whole process so damn easy. Heck yeah, that's what I'm talking about. So you guys are from the, uh, the city of brotherly love, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. How's the uh, pop punk scene there? Do you have a favorite local band, favorite venue? As of right now, I mean, we only really played one venue pretty predominantly in Philly called The Fire, if you're familiar with that one. Yeah, Raptor Art. Yeah. Um, that, that, but the scene in, like, in general in Philly, I don't know, it's, it's been like kind of ebbing and flowing. I've gone to shows more recently, and I've been digging this one band called um, Familiar Things. They played with my uh, friends in Sleep Cycles, a few, and other local bands Sleep Cycles a few times, and that's like, I'm really jiving with that sound and kind of that, I don't know. Less, more of like a harken back to the early 2000s pop punk and like alternative rock and like the drive through record stuff. It's really cool. Yeah, there's also um, uh, a festival that happens every year, uh, like a mini one at a brewery called Broken Goblet called yeah. uh, This Is Not Croydon Fest. It used to be at the Shannon Creek when it was in Croydon, but these guys are right next door. And that's a lot of like ska bands and stuff that come through. So a similar band territory. So 
it is kind of cool. There's almost like specialized shows sometimes that show the scene is alive. Um, you know, it's definitely different than, you know, the heyday of the two thousand mid-2000s. But yeah, only it's still BFWs. doing its thing. People are still playing, which is great. Only YMCA shows. Yeah. <laughs> YMCA teams, team centers. Yeah. We need to uh, make YMCA shows great again. We do. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> BFW, American Legion, house shows. BFWs. Yeah. Yeah. I miss those. I grew up on those. And, uh... They were a big part of uh, my formative years, I think. Oh, yeah. Playing music. Yeah, I got to see the Wonder Years at a YMCA Teen Center. And we got to play like, way back in, like, you know, early on, 2005, 2006. So. Uh, Good times. I forgot about another band, Goalkeeper. That's another mm-hmm. local band that oh, Forbird yeah. that we've been jamming to. Um, and that we've, uh, at least uh, at least Tom and Mark have become friends with them over the, over the years. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, like, at least, you know, going to Philly Van and everything. Right on. So who would you say your biggest uh, influences are? We're sporadic. Yeah, we're, we're all talking about that for an hour. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, mean, like, I, I really like like bands like Alpha and Trio. Um, I think that's kind of a given, if you know me. Um, yeah. And then the, the guitar style. Yeah, yeah. I, can, I can hear that. So like, if you hear any Alpha and Trio, a lot of that's me. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I grew up a lot of, on a lot of uh, like old school <laughs> punk rock. Got into pop punk, I guess, um, around uh, high school, and uh, just a lot of those kind of bands. Uh, I really love the Weaker Thans, but I don't know how much that shows in my play. <laughs> um, uh, definitely love Fall Out Boy. I do, at least. Um, it really shows in my vocal style. Uh, a lot of the 90s and like 2000s, like Third Eye Blind, Jimmy World and Motion City soundtrack, like those bands, I uh, really like. They gravitated to, and they kind of kept me playing or like wanting to be in bands. Yeah, uh, for me, um, I mean, I love the, the differences we all have in our music, and they come together so well. But I was a big fan of the Vines, like that garage rock, yeah. rough sound, and uh, then I also love Rush. You know, huge, you know, classic '80s rock band stuff like that, um, and then the '90s as well, like Collective Soul and everything. So it kind of hits and varies, but I would say those three are, are prominent in like my playing. Yeah. Uh, I had a buddy of mine that got me into all kinds of different stuff, but mainly I, I love listening to Mastodon and the Blood Brothers a lot. And then um, then my taste just completely mellowed out like a few years later, and I got really into Radiohead. And then now my music taste is just all over the place. Yeah, he uses in there too for me. Yeah, I forgot about that. Anyway, what were you listening to a couple minutes ago down there? Uh, <laughs> nowhere. No, no we're, Lewis uh, Cole. Yeah, Lewis, Lewis Cole. Cole, Ginger Root. Ginger Root, yeah. yeah. Really fun stuff. Sick. So here's the million dollar question for you guys. If you could tour with any of those bands, who would it be? Uh, I know we didn't list them, but I would love the tour of Bowling for Soup. They just seem very, very fun still. Something about it. Um, but God. Yeah, I mean, there's a current band on the scene, too, that I like a lot. I've gotten into a Hot Mulligan. Yeah. I'm really getting into them recently. And, um, uh, oh, man, what's that band that just has ridiculous lyrics all the time, Mark, that just, like, um, oh, my God. Oh, no. I'm blanking (laughs) on the other guy. They, like, they're pretty much, their songs are, like, I hate you, you like me, let's go tie our shoes, stuff like that, you know, like, it's oh, very no, strange. Like, what are you talking about? Uh, okay. <laughs> they almost sound like blank, and I'm like, I'm yeah, no, they're, they're ridiculous, but they'd be okay. fun, because people all sing their stuff, and, and that, I love, the, the crowd would be amazing for that, so. And for me, personally, uh, Midtown, uh, uh, Motion City soundtrack, Punchline would be, uh, be pretty up there for me. Yeah, Motion City would be really cool. Motion City soundtrack. Yeah. Front I can, bottoms. I can agree. Front bottoms. Oh, yeah. yeah, there we go. <laughs> I'm not a fan of front bottoms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like, I like them. In, uh, I like the description. Sure. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> really ridiculous lyrics. Time my shoes. You really got me with the uh, Midtown. Midtown. Well, like, right. as big as they are, I think they're still underrated. They still don't get the love they deserve. Yeah, they've been doing comeback shows uh, usually about like at least once a year. Uh, it's been nice to see them a little more active lately. I know they've all got uh, separate lives, but it's cool to see them back a little bit. Yeah. Have, you, have you seen them live or no? Oh yeah, yeah. Every, they every, are hand. That was hands down one of the best shows that I've ever been to. It was incredible. When was that? This was either last year or two years ago. It was at the Starlin Ballroom in Sayreville. And yep, uh, was, it was incre- it was incredible. Oh, it was so I good. Go. 
I'm also and then the, the band that opened was really good too. Uh, Lane Mayer, they killed it. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, Lane Mayer was a band from way back in the day when I was growing up. Um, I think uh, I feel like I feel like maybe Gabe was in that band at some point or something like that. Uh, but yeah, that was that was a great show. It was a really really good show. Right on. So now I'm going to uh, ask you guys some non-music questions. This is a great way for me to get to know you guys as people. I did this with the other bands. Are you ready? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. All right, first one, favorite subject in school? Math. 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 I like math. Math. Uh, uh, I'm going to be lame in music. <laughs> like I did for music classes. I, I like science. So. <laughs> what a nerd. Like I was, I was good. <laughs> okay, any, anything science related, I feel like I gravitated towards. I hated history. I know that much. So, yeah, social, <laughs> social studies, not stuff. I fell asleep a lot. No way. Yeah, that was the. But math is huge. So. Mm -hmm. All right, so the math and science people can leave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I'm just, I'm just giving you a hard time. I'm always saying that because math and science were my least favorite subjects, and they were my worst ones. But then again, like I didn't take them like as seriously as I should have. So I mean, that's my fault. That's something I have to live with. And, uh, but you know, it is what it is. I was a, um, a dumb, you know, 15, 16, 17 year old. Oh, yeah. We all were. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I, I, feel like I didn't Some things that don't too. change. Like I was dumb at 15. I was, I'm dumb at 32. It just, it is what it is. <laughs> so I'm a little bit over time. It's all good. Yeah, I definitely exactly. care more about learning now than I did back yes. then. God, oh, I, yeah, so sure. so I go to the library more than I have. As soon as I started to have to, as soon as I started having to pay for it, I was like, oh, I'm paying attention. Yeah, that's true too. So if you guys could be fluent in another language instantly, what language? Japanese. <laughs> not even a, not even a thought. <laughs> Japanese. Yeah. It's a pretty good choice for yeah. uh, you know, anime manga. Oh yeah. Uh, I would say Spanish for me. Yeah, I'd float between Chinese and Spanish. I don't know which one. Probably Chinese. Like, like just any, like Mandarin or food. Just whatever, or... whatever the largest population is There's that a lot. speaks. There's like so many. There was a large food. Food is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, I am definitely weird because I've watched Razor Reservation Dogs recently. I think they kind of need to like learn a Native American language or like one of the dying languages because like keeping that on uh, the preservation is kind of important to me um outside of music uh so like that that really inspired me when i was watching reservation dogs and learning about like a lot of the uh, like the west coast native american culture and everything that's sick that's uh definitely different keeping things interesting i love it so if you guys go back in time and talk to one world leader or person of influence who would it be Uh, God, what's his name? George Washington Carver. I want to know how the hell he got to peanut butter so bad. <laughs> how I, I literally, like, besides I want to, I mean, all right, that or the person who, like, discovered how to ride a horse. <laughs> like, I would like to meet those kind of people. But, like, my God, it, it's something about meeting that dude and figuring out peanut butter. I, was I, just, I, I think it'd be cool to uh, meet Da Vinci. That'd be fun. Uh, yeah, right, you got a better one than me. <laughs> 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 That's good. That's good. I, I, it's just, like, the more you learn about how he was, like, a... Did so much stuff and how like crazy and smart he was at the same time. Uh, it's all over. So it'd be fun to meet him. I would say uh, Leo Fender. Oh, he got like a, he got a lot of things right the first time, and it would be really cool to pick his brain about the times. Yeah. I think I would say the producer Jerry Finn. Oh, uh, man. that's he amazing. Was, he was just a genius, and damn, it makes me upset every time I think about like how many great records could have been made, you know, had he still been alive. Yeah. So. I got nothing. <laughs> Come on, I said you got to have something better than Dead musicians count. Yeah, I know. Probably, I mean, he's did a great job. Right? Probably somebody somebody from, like, the ancient times because, like, a lot of historical documents are just based on speculation or they're basically just, like, in uh, uh, propaganda stories because, you know, the winners wrote history. So I, maybe I talked to, like, I don't know, Xerxes or somebody would be like, is this uh, right? Did you do this? Is this real? I was going to have this many people in your army. <laughs> I mean, you tell me the truth because nobody knows. So I probably talked to one of them. That's a good did you kill Gerard Butler? <laughs> <laughs> Were the 300 guys really that rich? <laughs> Those are great ones. I love it. So if you guys had a million dollars and you could donate to any charity, which one? 
uh, forget the name of it, but it's whatever ranch Stevo volunteers at. I would love to keep that going. That way, as many animals and anyone who needs that space in general can prosper and not to worry about like having a roof over their head. Yeah, I think there's a, there's a place in Philly. I think it's called um, City of was it um, Elderly Love or something like that. Uh, they, yeah, they, they, they do a lot of like I work with like older animals. I don't know. I just followed them on Instagram recently. So, right. That'd be, that'd be nice. I'd probably say the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. That's uh, a yeah. cause that's uh, very near and dear to me. Yeah, uh, mine's a weird one, but it's hockey related. Um, so Lane Gretzky. But uh, the, 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 <laughs> Snyder, the Snyder Youth Hockey Foundation is really cool because it helps, you know, just give, you know, people another outlet you know, of uh, another sport and everything and kind of education in that sense. So I think that's pretty cool what they've been doing over the years. So. Yeah, I'll probably, uh, I'd probably go with Tom's answer, too. Yeah, Tom's so answer pretty much the best, yeah. yeah. It's, it's called Locks a Lot. I just found it for steve Ranch. Oh, Locks a Lot. Yeah, where they, like, one of the cool things that they, like, help rehabilitate a cow. That was neat. Oh, that's sick. Yeah. All right, last question. What are some places in Philadelphia that visitors should check out? Ooh, I got one off the bat. I feel like I an love. easy one would be like the Knicks. Like, That's I'm, true. I'm big into food, so like, Same. I'm going to be giving food answers. I mean, <laughs> I, I also am a nerd. I like going to museums and like art exhibits and shit. Yep. So one, I will highly recommend. One, support your local library. Two, uh, Shifuso Japanese Garden, Shifuso hands awesome. down, it's great for any and out by yourself, a date, a group, your family. It's fantastic. There's a huge koi pond. I don't think I've seen koi ever that, ever that large in my life, and they're like, it's not even, it's, it's right in our backyard, you know. Yeah. Um, outside of that, uh, Tommy actually went to this. I said Tommy. <laughs> Tom went to this recently. <laughs> uh, the Magic Gardens. I fully yeah. support. The, Very cool. The, uh, Maybe hard to get a hold of them on the phone, but man, it is such a great exhibit and so unique. Uh, and the Mutter Museum, if you. Mutter Museum. I, yeah, I was just gonna yeah. say that. Too. Uh, as I say that, especially because please support the Mutter Museum before they decide to get rid of all the stuff for whatever reason. <laughs> yeah, it's a small, small museum of like medical oddities and uh, various things of that nature, yeah. and uh, it's really, really cool. Worth going at least once. And this um, this is in Bucks County, not in Philly, but I, I'm a big fan of Peace Valley Nature Center. Yeah, great yeah. area for like hikes. You can even go out, you well, know, especially now in the summer, and rent sailboats or kayaks and stuff. It's funny you mention that. One of our songs is about that part. Yeah, about the lake. Yeah, and that's the, right. Even the Lake Alina. Yeah, yeah. So there's a uh, a lot of cool stuff there. You know, and you, you see parties there. There's playground stuff as well as nature. Um, it's awesome. So. What about you, Tim? No, they, you covered it all. It's fine. Okay, you sure we got nothing? <laughs> You're the mailman. Yeah, you, know, you see more than we ever will. I, I've seen the ugly. <laughs> <laughs> where, sh where shouldn't we go? His ugly underbelly. That's right. Well, museums in peace, sign me up. I'll be there in a second. That's right. Well, I really appreciate you guys coming on and talking up a little bit, and the support means the world to me. No, dude, thank, thank you, you so much for having yeah. us and asking some great questions. So, uh, yeah. What can I say? I try. <laughs> It shows. Thanks, Thanks, there, so. so for the people who are going to watch this interview later, where can they find your music at? Uh, any streaming platform, you can find it there. Um, if you want to buy the music, uh, our band camp, we have it available uh, for digital download. Um, maybe eventually we'll have vinyl. If we see more people wanting it, we'll get it. Um, it's expensive for a small band like us, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you want it, you got to really want it. Cause yeah. One, we would like it for ourselves because that'd be cool to have on my wall too. But like, yeah, if you want vinyl, like, make it known. <laughs> then we'll, we'll think about it. Yeah, but Spotify, Apple, YouTube, all Deezer. Time, <laughs> We're on Deezer. Does anybody even use Deezer? I used it just to check it out, and I didn't realize we had ten plays from it. And I'm like, who? That's Where is ten? People? Someone's yeah. using it. Yeah. Ten people listen to our stuff Jeez. on Deezer, so thank you, yeah. see whoever you all are. But uh, we're we are literally everywhere, and I don't know where else we could be. So. Mm -hmm. We're trying to get more involved in making uh, like content as well. So Instagram, TikTok. Yeah, follow us on there if you want to keep up with us. We'll be releasing a lot more stuff in the future outside of the music. Mm -hmm. 
do what they say, go to the websites, listen to the music, then buy it, buy it, buy it. Can't stress that enough. Buy merch, support local music. You guys are killing it. The, the first two songs are absolutely incredible. Right. You guys are one of my favorite up and coming bands. I'm not just saying that. I mean it. Keep up the great work and uh, just, you know, keep grinding. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks for having of us. course. I hope you guys have a great night and we'll, uh, we'll be in touch. Yep. You do the same. And, uh, Peace. Peace. <laughs> Peace. Stay.